Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. Yes, balancing a chemical equation is based on law of conservation of mass. Hello students, welcome to Learn Guru classes. So today we are going to discuss about how to balance a chemical equation under the first chapter of class 10 science, chemical reactions and equations. So in this video, we are going to study what balancing a chemical equation means, what is the necessity of balancing a chemical equation and at last how to balance a chemical equation with lots and lots of examples. And I assure you that after watching this video, your concepts about this topic will be very clear. So with this note, let's begin our class. Let us try to understand what balancing means with the help of, an, of a real life example. So we often go to the market. If we go to the market and ask the shopkeeper to key, give 1 kg apple, so what does he do? He places some quantity of apples on the right hand side of the scale and some weights worth 1 kg on the other side of the scale and tries to balance it. So if both the hands of the uh, scale are on the same level, so we say that it is perfectly balanced, that is we are exactly getting 1 kg of apple. And if the level is not same in both the sides of the scale, then we say that it is not giving us 1 kg apple. So, either what we need to do, we need to balance it either by removing some apple or by adding some apple into it. So, the first figure shows that the scale is not balanced as it is not giving us 1 kg apple, it is excess of 1 kg apple. So, if we remove one apple from the scale, then in the second figure, it shows that the scale is perfectly balanced. So what is balanced? If we try to understand what is balanced in terms of a scale, we see that the right hand side and the left hand side should be exactly in the same level. So we say that it is balanced or the scale is balanced. Now what balancing a chemical equation means? Let's try to understand it. We all know that in a chemical reaction, two or more reactants combine together to give rise to new product. Now we can say that a chemical equation is balanced when the number of atoms in the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms in the product side. Let's take one example that is when zinc reacts with sulfuric acid, it gives zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. So zinc is in the reactant side, zinc has one atom, the hydrogen in the uh, sulfuric acid has two atoms, sulfur has one atom and oxygen has four atoms. So there are a total number of eight atoms in the reactant side. So let's look into the product side. So it reacts to form zinc sulfate. So zinc has one atom, sulfur has one atom and oxygen has four atoms and hydrogen gives two atoms. So there are a total number of eight atoms in the product side. So what do we see? The number of atoms in the reactant side and the number of atoms in the product side is exactly the same. So we say that this equation is a balanced chemical equation. Now just for the sake of clear understanding, if we put the reactants that is zinc and sulfuric acid on the left hand side of the scale and the products on the right hand side of the scale, we see that the levels of the scale is perfectly balanced or perfectly the same. So we see, see that the reactants has 8 number of atoms and the product has 8 number of atoms that both of them are equal and the scale is perfectly balanced. Hence the chemical equation is also balanced. Let's look into another example. When magnesium reacts with oxygen, it gives magnesium oxide. 
So let's check the number of atoms in the reactant side. So magnesium has one atom and oxygen has one or uh, two atoms. So total there are three atoms in the reactant side. And in the product side, magnesium has one atom and oxygen has one atom. That is there are two atoms in the product side. So reactant side atoms is not equal to the product side atom. So we cannot say that uh, this equation is balanced. That is it is an unbalanced equation. Let us try to understand the entire concept with the help of a scale. So, we see that the uh, number of atoms in the reactant side is not equal to the number of atoms in the product side. That is why the level of the scale on both the sides are not equal. So, our duty is to make both the sides equal by balancing the number of atoms. So, this is what balancing a chemical equation is all about. So the next is why do we need to balance a chemical equation? So let's take one example that is when hydrogen and oxygen combines together to form water that is H2. So if you see in the reactant side, hydrogen is, exists, comes as hydrogen molecule, oxygen comes as oxygen molecule that is both of them are diatomic. Now if we try to understand it by calculating the molecular weights of the reactants and the products, let us see. So the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1u. So two atoms of hydrogen that is 2 into 1u that is 2u. Oxygen, atomic weight of oxygen is 16u. So 2 into 16u gives 32u that is there are total number of atoms that is 34u molecular weight is the molecular weight of the in the reactant side. Now if you go into the product side H2O so A2 into 1u that is atomic weight of um, ox hydrogen plus 16u that is atomic weight of oxygen. So that gives us 18u. So we clearly see that the at molecular weight in the reactant side is not equal to the molecular weight in the product side. So is it following law of conservation of mass? No, it is not following law of conservation of mass because the num uh, molecular weight in the reactant side is not equal to the molecular weight in the product side. Now what we have to do? So just see here in the reactant side, okay, two atoms of hydrogen was used and two atoms of oxygen was used. And in the product side, if we see two atoms of hydrogen was used and only one atom was there to form a what to form water means there is a scarcity of one atom of oxygen in the product side now how to tackle that so the solution to this problem is that if we add one more oxygen atom in the product side then the molecular weight or in the reactant side and the molecular weight in the product side will be equal. So if we add one atom of oxygen to the product side it becomes H2O2. But H2O2 has a different chemical property or to compare to that of water. So we cannot change the molecular formula because H2O2 is a completely different molecular formula than that of water that is H2O. So a ban on the uh, change in the molecular formula. Okay, so what we need to do? We need to adjust the existing number of atoms that we have already in the reaction. So we go by this process that if we multiply 
2 to the product side and we if we multiply 2 to the hydrogen okay it becomes molecular weight in the reactant side and the molecular weight in the product side becomes exactly equal now how this is being done we will see later but this is how we uh, try to balance our chemical equation by not changing the chemical formula anywhere. So, we see here that the number of uh, or the molecular weight of the reactants is equal to the molecular weights in the products and thus the chemical equation is completely balanced and law of conservation of mass is being followed. Thus, we see that by adjusting the number of atoms, we can adjust the or we can say that the molecular weight of the reactants and the products will be balanced automatically. So, let us look into the procedure of how to balance a chemical equation. We can attain a balanced chemical equation by following these steps. So, first of all, let us take one unbalanced equation that is Mg plus O2 gives MgO and write the unbalanced equation. So, in the second step, let us write the number of atoms in the reactant side and the number of atoms in the product side. So, in the reactant side, magnesium has one atom, oxygen has two atoms, that is there are a total number of three atoms in the reactant side. So, in the product side, magnesium has one atom and oxygen has one atom, that is there are a total number of two atoms in the product side. So, we see that the equation is not balanced here because number of atoms in the reactant is not equal to the number of atoms in the product side. So, hence we proceed to the third step. The third step is to balance the chemical equation by adding coefficients and we keep on adding the coefficients at every step till we attain the number of atoms in the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms in the product side. So, let us check. So, here if we see that in the reactant side, there is an excess of one oxygen atom compared to that in the product side. So, if we multiply the product side with 2, we get 2 atoms of oxygen. So, let us write the number of atoms in the reactants and products after this step. So, reactant existing magnesium has one atom, oxygen has two atoms. So, here we are getting total number of three atoms in the reactant side. In the product side, we see that magnesium has two atoms and oxygen has two atoms. That is, there are a total number of four atoms in the product side. Now, if we see clearly in the product side, there is a surplus of one magnesium atom. So, this can be done in uh, by multiplying 2 to the uh, uh, 2 to the magnesium in the reactant side. So, let us go to the second uh, to the uh, third step where we do that we multiply 2 with the magnesium in the reactant side and uh, 2mg plus O2 gives 2mgO. Now, let us see the number of atoms in the reactant side. Magnesium has 2 atoms, uh, oxygen has 2 atoms. So, that is there are 4 atoms in the reactant side. As well in the product side, we see that 2 atoms of magnesium and 2 atoms of oxygen that is 4 atoms in the product side. So, we see that number of atoms in the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms in the product side. Thus, we have balanced the chemical equation. So, we are successful in balancing it by adding coefficients and not by changing the chemical formula. So, if, if we see at every step, we have not altered the chemical formula of magnesium or oxygen or magnesium 
oxide. Now, while balancing a chemical equation, you may come across a chemical equation when there is a presence of metals, non-metals and uh, oxygen and hydrogen. So, first priority should be given to the metals where like sodium, aluminium, potassium, then comes non-metals like chlorine, bromine, nitrogen and third priority should be given to oxygen and hydrogen atoms while balancing. Let's try to practice some balancing a chemical equation. So the first equation is AgI plus Na2S gives Ag2S plus Nai. Okay, so as you all know this is the reactant side and this is the product side. So, let's see how many atoms are there in the reactant side and the product side for each element. So, the first step is let's write down the atoms, number of L, L, um, atoms in the product and the reactant side in the tabular format. Okay, so the what are the elements available? Ag is available, sodium is available, iodine I is available and sulfur. So sodium um, Ag has one atom in the reactant side and two atoms in the product side. Sodium has two atoms in the reactant side and one atom in the product side. Iodine has one atom in the reactant side and one atom in the product side and sulfur has one atom in the reactant side and one atom in the product side. So if we see here sodium and silver has mismatch in the number of atoms for both the two sides. Okay that is one two that is not equal and sodium two and one that is also not equal. Now if we see that both silver that is Ag and sodium is a metal. So as we have studied in the earlier cases preference in if there is a mismatch in the number of atoms in the in both the two sides so the preference should be given to on metal first preference should be given to metal then non-metals then oxygen and hydrogen but here there is mismatch in both the two atoms so uh, two metals okay so here what we do we take any metal uh, it will not matter so let's take sodium uh, ag and try to balance the number of atoms in both the two sides now if we see clearly from the uh, from the table we see that one atom is there in the reactant side and one atom in the product side so we are to make two atoms of silver in the reactant side then we can say that two atoms and two atoms in both the two sides then it will be balanced for silver. So, for that what we need to do in the second step let us write, write down the chemical equation as it, as it is. Okay? So, we are writing it as AGI plus Na2S gives Ag2S plus Nai. Now, we multiply 2 with AGI in the reactant side. Again, let us try to analyze this with this table. Elements, reactant, product. Okay. So, this is Ag, Na, I and S. So, Ag has two atoms in the reactant now, two atoms in the product. Sodium has two atoms in the reactant side, one atom in the product. Iodine has two atoms in the reactant, 
one atom in the product and sulfur has one atom, one atom. Now if we see here sodium, there is mismatch in the number of atoms for sodium 2 and 1 and iodine also 2 and 1. Now again if we see here sodium is a metal and iodine is a non-metal. So which one should be given preference? Of course sodium should be given preference first. So reactant if you see in the two atoms in the reactant and one atom in the product. So we are to make two atoms in the product side for sodium atom. So in the third step let us write down the second updated chemical equation as it is 2AGI plus Na2S gives Ag2S plus NaI. Now two atoms in the reactant side for sodium. So here we multiplied two atom for to multiply by two multiply with two for sodium iodide so that two atoms of sodium are there in the product side. Now again we write down the table that is elements reactant product Ag Na I and S. So here two atoms for silver, two atoms sodium, two atoms in the reactant side, two atoms in the product side. Iodine has two atoms in the reactant side, two atoms in the product side and sulfur has one atom, one atom each. So if we see that all the atoms are same in both the two sides for each and every element. So this is the condition for a balanced chemical equation. So this equation that is 2AGI plus Na2S gives Ag2S plus 2NAI is the balanced balanced chemical equation. The second example is C4H6O3 plus H2O gives C2H4O2. Okay, so let us check the number of atoms in the product side and the reactant side for each and every element. So this is the first step. So we write down it in the tabular format elements reactant product. So elements available are carbon hydrogen, oxygen. So how many atoms are there in the uh, reactant side for carbon? If you see only 4 atoms are there in the reactant side and in the product side 2 atoms of carbon. Hydrogen H6 here also H2O that is 2 atoms of hydrogen plus 6 atoms of hydrogen 6 plus 2 gives 8 and here that is 4 atoms of hydrogen and oxygen has 3 plus 1 that is 4 and here that is 2. Okay, so there is a mismatch in all the, uh, in all the elements, okay, reactant and the product side. Now what we need to do, we need to give preference to carbon first. Then oxygen and hydrogen can be adjusted automatically. So if we see reactant has 4 atoms and product has 2 atoms. Okay. Now to make the number of atoms to be 4 in the 
product side we if we simply multiply it with 2 then there will be 4 atoms in the uh, product side for carbon. So, in the second step what we will do we will write the equation as it is and we will simply multiply it with 2 in the product side. Then again write down the table or fill the details in the table. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Now we see that 4 atoms in the reactant side for carbon, 4 atoms in the product side for carbon. Hydrogen 6 plus 2 that is 8 here. 4 is there so 4 into 2 is 8 and oxygen 4 so 3 plus 1 that is 4 and here 2 into 2 that is 4. So here the equation has become balanced by in, within one step itself. So we write that C4H6O3 plus H2O that is give, it gives 2C2H4O2 is the balanced chemical equation. The next example is KOH plus H3PO4 gives K3PO4 plus H2O. Okay, so let's write down the number of atoms in the reactant and the product side for each element. So, what are the elements available? Potassium, that is K, phosphorus, T, oxygen and hydrogen. So, potassium has one atom in the reactant side, three atoms in the product side. Phosphorus has one atom in the reactant side, one atom in the product side. Oxygen, one plus four, that is five in the reactant side and uh, product side also it is 5 and hydrogen 1 plus 3 that is 4 and uh, product side 2. Okay, so we see that there is a mismatch in the number of atoms in the for potassium as well as for hydrogen. So, potassium as we all know potassium is a metal. So, obviously preference should be given to potassium while balancing. So, here in the reactant side one atom of potassium and at the product side three atoms of potassium. So, somehow we have to make three atoms of potassium in the reactant side. So, what we need to do in the second step we will write the chemical equation as it is and here we will be multiplying with 3 in the reactant site where potassium is available. Then again we will write down the elements reactant product okay potassium phosphorus oxygen hydrogen now here we see that three atoms of potassium in the reactant side three atoms of potassium in the product side phosphorus one atom one atom oxygen has 3 plus 4 that is 
7 and in the product side 5 and hydrogen as 3 plus 3 that is 6 and here that is 2. Okay. So, again we see that there is a mismatch in the number of atoms for hydrogen as well as oxygen. Now, if we see here, hydrogen has, hydrogen has 6 atoms in the reactant side and 2 atoms in the product side. So, somehow if we can make the number of atoms in the uh, product side as 6 for hydrogen, then our problem will be solved. So, how this can be done? If we multiply H2O with 3. So, 3 into 2, 2 it will give us 6. So, again let us rewrite the last updated chemical equation that is 3KOH plus H3PO4 gives K3PO4 plus 3H 2O. Okay. Now, again we write down the atoms for both the two sides. That is, this is the reactant. This is the product. So, this is potassium, phosphorus, oxygen, hydrogen. So, three atoms of potassium, three atoms of potassium, phosphorus, one atom, one atom, oxygen if we see, three plus uh, three atoms of oxygen plus four atoms of oxygen. So, three plus four that is seven. Here if we see four plus three, yes, it has become seven and hydrogen, Obviously, it will be balanced 3 plus 3 that is 6, 3 into H2 that is 6. So, we see that all the elements are balanced. Means all the elements have the same number of atoms in both the reactant and the product side. So, thus 3KOH plus H3PO4 gives K3PO4 plus 3H2O is the is the balanced chemical equation. The next equation is C5H8O2 plus NaH plus HCl gives C5H12O2 plus NaCl. Okay. So, let us check the first step and see the elements, uh, atoms in the product and the reactant side. So, how many elements are there? Carbon is there, sodium is there, chlorine is there, uh, then hydrogen is there and oxygen is there. Okay. So, have I missed out any element? No. Okay. So, see here how many atoms are there uh, for carbon? 5 atoms for carbon in the reactant side as well as the product side. Sodium, one atom, one atom. Chlorine, chlorine has one atom, one atom. Hydrogen, eight, nine, ten. Ten atoms of hydrogen in the reactant side and twelve atoms of hydrogen in the product side and for oxygen, 2, 2 and uh, in the reactant side and 2 atoms in the product side. 
so if you see there are there is a combination of metals non metals hydrogen oxygen here but out of all this only there is a mismatch in the number of atoms for hydrogen okay now what you need to do so if you see here the number of atoms in the reactant side is 10 and for the product side is 12. So somehow we have to make it to 12 means we have to add two more atoms of hydrogen in the reactant side. So let's again go into the chemical equation. Here we see that how many hydrogen 8, 9, 10. Okay, 9, 10. So there is a scarcity of two atoms. Now if we can multiply 2 for sodium hydride and for so hydrogen chloride okay so 2 plus 2 will gives us uh, gives us 4 so 8 plus 4 gives us 12. So in the second step what we will do we will write the chemical equation as it is. And here we multiply it with 2, okay, 2. Okay, now again we write down the atoms, number of atoms. Five atoms, five atoms of carbon, sodium here two, here one, chlorine two, here one in the reactant product side, hydrogen eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, here also twelve, and oxygen has two and two. Okay, so here. Again, we see that though so, uh, the number of atoms of hydrogen has become equal, but there is a mismatch in sodium atoms, in chlorine atoms, okay. So for that, what you need to do, first of all, let's try to, according to the preference criteria, let's give preference to the metal that is sodium. So in the reactant side, only one atom of uh, sodium is there. So if we multiply it with 2, then it will become num uh, number of, uh, means two, two atoms of sodium will be available. So in the third step, we will write down the last updated chemical equation as it is. And here we will be multiplying it with 2. Okay. Now we write down the updated elements. Reactant product. So this is carbon, sodium, chlorine. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, 5, 5, sodium, 2, 2, chlorine, 2, 2, hydrogen, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, here also 12 and oxygen, let's check, check oxygen, oxygen is 2 and here also it is so we see that all the a number of atoms in all the elements have become equal. Thus, we can say that the equation is balanced. So the balanced chemical equation, we write down this.
This is all about balancing a chemical equation. I hope that you have tried to understand the concepts I have tried to explain to you. Remember that perfection in balancing a chemical equation can only be attained with the help of practice. So if you like this video, please subscribe to Learn Guru classes, like, comment and share it with your friends and family. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.